Ready to visit Cuba? We're going to take you there, and you don't even need to pack your bags. It's thanks to the new Tropical Forest Cuba exhibit at Phipps Conservatory. Tribune Review Home and Garden Editor Doug Oster gives us a tour. Welcome to Tropical Forest Cuba at Phipps Conservatory and Botanical Gardens. I'm here with the exhibit coordinator, Jordan Molino. And Welcome to Cuba, Doug. This definitely says Cuba. We got Cuba on the radio, and you actually spent time in Cuba to put this all together. Yeah, in 2016, I spent about three weeks in Cuba, then Havana uh, in Vinales, which is where a lot of the farm and the tobacco and different crops are growing, in Humboldt National Park all as part of the research process for this exhibit. And when people come to the exhibit, they can do just like we're doing. They can sit in this car. What is this? Absolutely. This is a 1949 Chevrolet Fleet Line. Oh, and I bet you saw cars like this in Cuba, right? And it was really interesting. I felt completely transported back in time. These cars are still running on the road in Cuba today. Amazing. Let's go look at the show. Did you put it in park? Oh, shoot. <laughs> so, why Cuba for this exhibit? Yeah, great question. Cuba has the highest amount of biodiversity in the Caribbean islands. Um, it's home to over 7,000 individual plant species, half of which are endemic or only found in Cuba. And what are we looking at here? What is this? So this is part of our medicinal beds. We're showing off some of the plants that have medicinal qualities. Mango, avocado, coconut tree. Um, below you'll see aloe as well as Cuban mint and Cuban oregano. All of these are used for medicinal purposes. And I guess that's why we're close to the pharmacy, right? Yep, exactly. <laughs> this is our pharmacia. Um, and here we talk about the connection between medicinal plants, medicines used in the pharmacias, and pharmaceuticals as well. All right, I'm ready to stop at the cafe. What did you learn about the culture of Cuba? While I was there, I visited a Paladar, um, which is a privately owned restaurant, usually run out of someone's home. Um, and Paladars and privately owned businesses are legal within the last 20 years. Um, so it's, it's definitely changed the economy in Cuba within the last 20 years. Um, but a lot of the, the food and plants are grown within the area and are very local. Um, and very fresh. Very good. And sometimes sitting in here, I mean, you're going to listen to Cuban radio, but you might hear a baseball game, right? Yeah, we got a Cuban baseball game on the radio in the background. All right. Uh, do you mind getting the check? Oh, I'm out of, I'm out of pesos. <laughs> well, one thing, I'll tell you what, it smells like a tropical island. Whatever's blooming in here. Doesn't it smell nice? And the humidity feels yep, very, yep, yep. very tropical. Now, this is an interesting plant. I've never seen this before. This is one of our features of the exhibit. This is called an old man palm. Um, and it's, it's named that because of the hairs and the fibers on its trunk. It looks like a, an old man's beard. Did you see these growing in Cuba? Um, this is a pretty rare, Oh wow! pretty rare palm. This palm tree is about six feet, five or six feet tall. This is about 20 years old. Um, wow. So Cuba is known for its very slow growing palm trees. Right. And a lot of that has to do with the limestone soils. Let's keep looking. How did you prepare for the trip? What kind of research did you do? Well, we have also been working with our Botany in Action research fellows, uh, a few of which are currently studying in the Caribbean um, and have influenced the content in this exhibit as well. So you'll see some of the plants that our researchers are studying nearby. Where were you? Uh, let's see. We were in Havana. That mm -hmm. was the original point. Um, crazy. This is only 90 miles off the coast of Florida. It's so close wow. to the United States. So Havana, all the way down to Vinales, which is extremely beautiful. These large limestone mountains. Um, and then I flew all the way over to Santiago de Cuba and spent a lot of time in Humboldt National Park, which is extremely beautiful. Uh, a lot of endemic plants here. And I love these. What, what is this? These are polymitas or Cuban land snails. They are endemic. They're only found in Cuba. You can see how beautiful their shells are. Um, and unfortunately, they're also used for jewelry making, uh, which is now illegal in Cuba. And you can be fined if you're caught with any of these snail shells. So these are, though, on loan Right. These are on loan from Carnegie Museum of Natural History. Uh, this is part of their collection that they loaned to us for the next three years. All right, show me more. Well, I've certainly never seen this tree before. <laughs> <laughs> and this is another feature of our exhibit. This is the gumbo limbo, 
which also has a common Cuban name of tourist tree because it has red peeling bark. <laughs> Because tourists have red peeling skin after spending time in yep. Cuba. Yep. Well, you definitely feel like you're in Cuba when you see this. This is amazing. Yeah, this entrance to our special events hall was based off of the architecture found in Old Havana. You'll see a lot of the Spanish colonial architecture. We even had our own custom uh, stained glass windows or vitrales made for oh, that's, the structure. That's awesome. Well, that must have been one of the real treats of visiting, too, was the architecture for you. I know yeah. the plants are important. Plants are important, but you got to have that content to make the plants important. I mean, Cuba seems like a whole other world with the plants and then birds, too. Yeah. Being an island nation, there's a whole lot of biodiversity in the birds, amphibians, and reptiles as well. And while I was in Cuba, I met the author and illustrator of the Cuban Endemic Bird Field Guide. Uh, really great guy. And we were able to continue to communicate with him after the uh, visit, and we were able to get some of his work for our birding station here. These are his illustrations. Wow. Oh, man, that is cool. <laughs> and that bird is represented from one out there, right? Right, yes. Yeah, so we worked with an artist to carve replicas of five of these endemic bird species, which you'll see in the canopy up above. Oh, that's neat. So two and a half years in the making, what do you hope visitors get when they come visit Tropical Forest Cuba? Yeah, there is so much to see and hear and do in this exhibit, including a dance station. Um, so I really hope that our visitors appreciate the beautiful plants and the unique species, but also the colorful culture as well. Oh, I could sit here all day. I'm going to make this my new office. As always, thank you so much. Of course, Ben. Tropical Forest Cuba is an amazing look at a different environment. It's something you should see. Back to you in the studio. Doug, thank you. I certainly want to check that out. It looks fascinating. Tonight, there's a special musical performance by an ensemble from Cuba. That's at 730 in the Palm Court of the exhibit. Look for details on that and other events at FIPS online. You'll find the link at kdka.com slash PTL.